So this is turning into a bit of a series. My name's Farhad, I'm a junior doctor working in London and I've been marking MMI's Imperial this year. Let's talk about the Breaking Bad News Station. The mark scheme is exactly the same as I mentioned in my other video. So if you've not seen that one, go check it out. In this station, you'll have about five minutes. And Imperial tend to like one question a minute. You'll probably watch a video that's about a minute long. After that, you'll have four minutes left. So you'll probably have four questions. Now, some of these scenarios I think are quite funny and ridiculous. So if you've got a dark humor like me, learn to suppress your laughter. When I've prepped a lot of people to actually do this station, I've given ludicrous examples just because I want to make them laugh because that's just one of the problems I have. Here's how to score well in these types of questions. If anyone asks you how to break bad news you can use the spikes framework. Pay attention here because actually this mnemonic is terrible. I've never particularly liked it myself and there's some things that you don't need to include for every single answer but it's a good starting point. The setting. Here you can talk about choosing a private place that's quiet so you can discuss sensitive topics but also think if it's the right time to talk about things. Make sure that your body language is warm, comforting, inviting. You've got some tissues there all of these things show empathy. Perception. We're going to ignore this one for now. Invitation. We're also going to ignore this one now but we'll come back to both of these a bit later in a different question. Knowledge. You want to use simple language, avoiding jargon, firing a warning shot, and then breaking the bad news in small chunks. Say that you'd use lots of pauses here. Emotions. Acknowledge their emotions. Say it's all okay. Let them talk. Be empathetic. Be supportive. All the things that I'm not. And then support and summarize. Once you've broken some bad news, you want to make some future plans together so you can check upon them in the future. And there's lots of questions you can get asked in this station. So here's how you'd get better marks in them. Don't ask the difference between empathy and sympathy. Don't just give a definition and move on. Throw in a small person example and you'll distinguish yourself from other candidates. Talk about how they're both useful traits but actually empathy dovetails off sympathy by having a reflective understanding of how the other person's feeling. That way you can relate to the person's feelings and put yourself in their shoes rather than just acknowledging them which can actually lead to pity. Obviously don't use those words, make them your own. Be careful when you use a personal example though. I remember one candidate got massively carried away went off onto a tangent. Maximum two sentences on a personal example that you should slot in here. Now you can either have an example where you've actually had to break some bad news to someone. So whether that's someone who hasn't made it into a sports team or didn't make the cut for a play that you were directing or it can be a time when you've had bad news broken to you you can talk about how that made you feel and incorporate that into your answer here but remember the level of reflection here doesn't need to be too long be succinct that's the trick make sure you answer the question specifically far too many candidates were going on to generalize how in this particular scenario it would relate to being a good doctor but that's not what this question is asking you've only got a minute per question maximize it answering the actual question you've been given and this scenario isn't going to be that you've got to go tell the family that their child child who's got stage four terminal cancer is dying. They're never going to give you something like that. Let's say someone tells you their pet's died. That's the kind of scenario you're going to get given. What you don't want to say here is you're going to conduct a thorough investigation and confirm all the facts leading up to the death of the cat. You're not a detective. I remember a candidate said this. This is clearly missing the point of the station. You'll probably get an inference question. And by this, they'll probably ask you, how would it be different for a doctor to break bad news? We're going to go through the framework again, but this time there's going to be a couple of changes. I'd start the station off by saying that it's clearly a difficult circumstance, that it's important to be understanding, warm, empathetic, and supportive during this time. Some kind of introductory statement like this can impress well upon the examiner. Again, you're going to want to take them to a private area. Also think about who the doctor might take with them. It might be a senior colleague or a nurse that knows the patient really well. Think about from the patient side too. Sometimes maybe the patient doesn't want anyone there and that can be explored. This time we're going to add in perception. Here you want to ask what the patient may know or have heard about the condition already. And then the next thing is you want to invite the patient to see how much they want to know and in what format. Maybe they don't actually want to know anything right now and they want some time to digest things and then want you to come back at a later time that's okay too. So then when you actually move on to knowledge, you now know what they want and in what format they want. So you can then talk about it. And then at the end, you want to summarize and think of future steps. Here's some things not to do. I remember one guy wore a f beanie to the interview. Don't wear a beanie. You have to be really good to get away with wearing a beanie. This person wasn't. Don't turn up in a hoodie. One person turned up in a hoodie. Don't do that. <laughs> look professional. First impressions matter. If you don't look professional, you'll always start on the back foot. One candidate was the most vanilla person I'd ever seen. There was no enthusiasm in their voice whatsoever. I don't even think they wanted to do medicine. So communication is really easy to pick up and you get marked on this. So practice sounding enthusiastic. Do these videos so that people who can't afford to go on these ridiculously expensive interview prep courses can get some understanding of how to answer these questions. So I hope it helps.